This will be the next lesson for the Bible Institute. We've come all the way through the Bible looking at the different covenants and dispensations and the different ways that God has dealt with man throughout the Bible. And we just got done with the millennium. And after the millennium, the Lord will burn everything up and make a new heaven and a new earth. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 through 13. It says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, But the day of the Lord, and that's a key phrase there, the day of the Lord, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, now this happens at the end of the millennium where he's going to burn everything up. You see, the day of the Lord, it covered more than just the second coming since one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. It overlaps some things. It, it stretched over the whole millennium. So this day, of the, the day of the Lord here will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So this is at the end of the millennium. And it says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God? See, that day of God. We're in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So you see that? He's going to burn everything up. Then look what it says. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So after, after the millennium, it's going to get even better. You see, in the millennium, you still had sin... In the millennium, you still had death. In the millennium, you still had the devil being loosed at the end. But not anymore when you get to the new heavens and the new earth. He's going to make all things new. You know, Solomon talked about, is there any new thing under the sun? He said, you know, you can't look at something and say, this is new. But Solomon's going to be able to look at this and say, See, this is new, and like he said in Ecclesiastes 1.10. So you had the lineup of the end times, starting with the rapture. We talked a little bit about that. Followed by the time of Jacob's trouble on the earth. We talked a little bit about that. While the tribulation, or the time of Jacob's trouble is going on, you got the judgment seat of Christ going on up in the third heaven. Then you have the second coming. And then you got the millennial kingdom. And then you've got, at the end of the millennial kingdom, you know, Satan's going to come out of that bottomless pit. This is Revelation 20. Satan's going to come out of that bottomless pit and deceive the nations, get the army as big as the sand of the sea, and then fire just comes down out of heaven and devours them. And then he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. The millennium's over. You're going to have the great white throne judgment. And right before the great white throne judgment, everything's burned up and people are judged in front of God just standing on nothing. They got no place to stand. And God is going to judge the lost of all ages at this great white throne judgment. Along with saints from the tribulation and millennium. Because they got to be judged somewhere. The judgment seat of Christ already passed. So the tribulation saints and millennial saints are going to be judged there as well. But in Revelation 20, 11 through 15, it talks about the great white throne. And it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. So you see, he's, he got rid of the earth and the heaven. And there was found no place for them. And it says, And I saw the dead, small and great. It don't matter who you are. Stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. The book of life is present, 
because there's going to be some people judged there that names are in the book of life. You got the tribulation saints and the millennial saints and the Old Testament saints who will get judged there and their names are in the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Notice that. According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. So that rich man, he's called up out of hell. And he's judged at the great, or the great white throne judgment. And he's judged on how bad the lake of fire is going to be for him. It's already been determined he's he's damned for eternity. He doesn't get a second chance. But look what it says. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Somewhere out there in the universe is the lake of fire. And you will go there one day if you aren't saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the book of Jude, it talks about the blackness of darkness forever. Being reserved for some. And these smart guys talk about those black wormholes out there in the universe that are extremely hot, but they're also extremely dark. So it's black heat. And you know, the lake of fire, it's, it's hot, but yet it's darkness. Yet there's fire, yet it's black and dark. So the lake of fire out there could be one of those things, maybe. Completely dark, completely burning fire. But that's the fate of every lost man. The fate of everyone that rejects the Lord he is a lake of fire where you will spend eternity. And after this great white throne, you've got eternity. But before we look at eternity, let's look at a possibility of a period of time between the renovation of the earth by fire and eternity. I'm not 100% sure of it, but I hate to exclude it. You can take it or leave it. It really makes no difference. But after the millennial kingdom... The renovation of the earth by fire and great white throne judgment. You have a period of time before eternity begins. Before. It has to be before eternity begins because it still involves time. In Deuteronomy 7, 9 it says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. You see that? It says, <clears throat> to a thousand generations. Now the Lord hasn't kept his covenant with Israel for a thousand generations yet. So it has to be yet in the future. In First Chronicles 16, 15, it says, Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. In Psalm 105 and verse 8, it says, He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. He says it three times. So this is significant. I mean, he said it three times in three different books of the Bible. And if a generation is 33 years in the Bible, this could be an additional 33,000 years before eternity actually begins. So if a generation is 33 years, and he says he's going to continue with this covenant for a thousand generations involving time, then this would be 33,000 more years before eternity actually begins. And this is not a new teaching. All the old guys taught it, like Larkin, he taught it. Ruckman talks about it. Guys way back during the Philadelphian church age, all those guys was talking about it. And Larkin, I believe he called it the perfect age or the perfect kingdom. And this could be that dispensation of the fullness of times. In Ephesians 1, 2, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. And I'm not sure that this period of time will be any different than eternity itself or 
the real purpose of it. We just know it will be a perfect kingdom without sin and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea. Now let's just really look at Revelation 21 and 22. In Revelation 21 and 22, you've got eternity. Those are the best chapters on eternity. He said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And the sea is the sea that was separating the third heaven from the second heaven. Remember the sea of glass in Revelation 15 too, In Revelation 4, that sea of glass was what the throne of God was on, and under that you got a body of water, and that body of water was separating God from the sinful creation. And that came about because of the flood back there in Genesis 1. But now you see that sea of glass is gone, and you have a new heaven and a new earth. The only reason that the sea of glass and the great body of water under it was there is because the Lord used it to separate him from the creation after Lucifer fell and flooded out everything. But now... No more sin problem. No need for it. Nothing has to separate God from his creation anymore. In Revelation 21, 2, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this is the bride, which is the Lamb's wife. That's us. Me and you make up the bride of Christ. And the holy city is prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. So he said in Revelation 21, 9, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So he takes John, takes him forward outside of time, Shows him eternity. And he sees New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. So let's look at eternity. And you see eternity in the last two chapters of the Bible. Revelation 21 through 22. And the Bible is a circle. It will circle right back around to where you were in Genesis. With a tree of life in Revelation 22 and verse 2. And in eternity you have three dwelling places. You got New Jerusalem which you see in Revelation 21. And New Jerusalem is the mother of every believer in the church age. As it says in Galatians 4.26, she's the mother of us all. And it descends, it descends from the second heaven, it descends from heaven down to the second heaven, down to the earth. So it comes down through space and gives real meaning to the name mothership. It's, a, it's the mother of us all, and it descends through space. Isn't that what the sci-fi movies have been doing for years now? Got these big motherships that come down through space and hover over the planet. You see, Hollywood doesn't have an original thought. You see, this city is pure gold. You see, Revelation 21.18 and 21.21... This city is like a bride, and it's for the bride. That's me and you. Every born-again believer make up the bride of Christ. It has jasper, which is transparent. Some guys a lot smarter than me talk about how big this city is that descends out of heaven from God. This city will stretch, will be, would be big enough to stretch from Boston, Massachusetts to Miami, Florida, from Miami, Florida to Denver, Colorado, and from Denver, Colorado to Buffalo, New York. And so a lot of guys say this city is 1,200 miles long, 1,200 miles wide, 1,200 miles high. That's New Jerusalem. It's huge. And then you got the New Earth. You see, the New Jerusalem's going to descend out of heaven from God descend down to the earth and then you got the new earth this will be you see the new Jerusalem was for us the bride the new earth will be for the Jews 
primarily. In Isaiah 66, 22, it says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. So, you, so, so shall your seed and your name remain. Israel will, will be transported to the new earth and fully fulfill, the Lord will fully fulfill the promise to Abraham that his seed will be as the stars and sand of the sea because they're going to be in natural bodies. You're going to have a Jewish remnant in natural bodies that will continue to have children throughout eternity and it will just go from there. It will literally be as the stars and sand of the sea for multitude. As he said in Genesis 17, 8, And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. It never stops. It just keeps going. It starts in the millennium of them getting the land. It goes on through the ages of ages, however long that could be. Those, those thousand generations, whether it be 33,000 years on the low end, 100,000 on the high end. But then it just keeps going on out into eternity where there is no time. It's an everlasting possession. It never runs out. It says in Deuteronomy 32, 7 through 9, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, the el thy elders, and they will tell thee, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. And they, they're going to get the land. They're going to get their inheritance. And it's an everlasting possession. So the bride gets the new Jerusalem. Israel gets the new earth. And the Gentiles will populate the new heaven. And you see, well, I thought that in Christ you're neither Jew nor Gentile. Yeah, in Christ. But you see, at the rapture, the body of Christ leaves. And after the rapture, nobody gets put back into the body of Christ. Gets put into the body of Christ. If if he was still putting people in the body of Christ after the rapture, like in the tribulation, if he was putting people in the body of Christ, there would be no need for a rapture. Because if he was putting people in the body of Christ during the tribulation, then you got part of the body of Christ going through the tribulation. So the saints of the tribulation are not put into the body of Christ. They don't get glorified bodies. They're not part of the bride. They're a different class of saint. Then you get into the millennium, and you're going to have people get right with the Lord there, and they're not putting the body of Christ. The body of Christ was already full. And that's going to be another different class of saint, a millennial saint. And there's going to be nations that were good to the Jew in the tribulation. And those individuals from those nations will go into the millennium. And they're going to be in natural bodies. They're not going to be in glorified bodies. They're going to be, you're going to have Gentiles that are right with the Lord in natural bodies. You're going to have Jews that are right with the Lord in natural bodies. And they'll be in the millennium. They'll have children in the, mill in the millennium. There'll be people born in the millennium. And these people that choose the Lord in the millennium, they go right on through into eternity in natural bodies. And you're going to have a remnant of faithful Israel on the new earth and natural bodies. You're going to have Gentiles who chose the Lord in natural bodies. And the Gentiles will also populate the new heaven. You see, you got all those planets out there. Them planets are there for a reason. In Hebrews 11, 14 through 16, it says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. So there is a future perfect 
country. A future perfect city. A lot better than any of them down here. There's a future new heavens and a new earth that we're looking forward to. God, You see, God's original plan with Adam and Eve was for them to pass the test in the Garden of Eden. Eat from the tree of life. Live forever for all eternity. And there would be so many people being born without dying that the population would grow on out into the universe which he made. You see, imagine if Adam and Eve never ate off the tree, never, out, never ate off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would have passed the test and ate off the tree of life, lived forever, passed eternal life down to their children. Their children would live forever. Their children would live forever. And you're going to have all these people being born, but none of them are dying. Eventually, the earth would have been full a long time ago. And then you look out there at those planets, and uh, you see all these galaxies, and they're all the time finding new planets, supposedly, they say. And they would just be transported off to those other planets and fill those up. That was God's original plan. A huge, enormous, never-ending universe full of sinless beings. That was the original plan. And you get to... Re but they, they messed up. So that put a, a halt in God's plan for a while. But then you get to Revelation 21, 22, and it's a circle. It goes back around to like it was supposed to be. You got a tree of life showing up again. You got no sin again. And you got people with the opportunity to partake off this tree of life and get eternal life. And they're going to live forever. And their children are going to live forever. And their children are going to live forever. And they're going to populate the universe throughout eternity. And that was God's original plan with Adam and Eve. And since the Lord allows man to have a free will and go against what he wants for their life, man ruined God's plan. It wasn't God's plan for man to sin. And it, the fact that God's plan didn't go through doesn't make God a failure. It makes man a failure. You see, he's not going to force you to do nothing. Man ruined God's plan. So God had to come down and die for man to ensure that his plan would come to pass and it does come to pass in eternity. Revelation 21 through 22. And Isaiah 9 through 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. See that? There shall be no end of it. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It's the zeal of the Lord of hosts. It's his, his zeal that's going to perform it. You see, when it's dark out, you look up. You look out into space. You get a telescope, you can see other planets. You see an innumerable amount of stars out there. Just like the Lord told Abraham in Genesis 15, 5, he said, it says, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars. That means count the stars. If thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. You see, that's not been fully fulfilled yet. There's been millions and millions and millions from Abraham. But that's not been completely fulfilled yet. Not until eternity. There really are so many stars out there that you can't even count them. There really are planets out there despite what some people say. And there's really going to be the seed of Abraham that goes on throughout eternity, so many of them that you can't count them, more than the sand of the sea. But then planets out there, there's planets out there, despite what people say, and why were those planets out there? Are they just out there just to say, just so that me and you can just get a telescope and just look at them? No, there's planets out there for a reason. And they're even saying that they're finding new planets all the time. Whether they are or not, I don't know, but I, I, I kind of believe it because I believe the Lord had those planets out there planned for them to be populated by sinless beings. In Second Kings 23, 5, it says, And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the city of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burn incense unto Baal to the sun, and to the moon, 
and to the planets and to all the host of heaven. There's something out there other than the sun and the moon. There's other planets. There's stars. There's galaxies out there. You see, God has a plan for those planets. In eternity, once the earth gets full, or maybe even before that, there will be inhabitants on those planets. If those planets are not habitable right now, remember it's new heavens and a new earth, they're going to be even more habitable than earth is right now, but way more. And his government and kingdom will get bigger and bigger and bigger on throughout eternity. The second heaven is going to be completely populated. These smart guys are always finding new planets, they say. They call them exoplanets. There's just hundreds of them. And they just, I just recently seen where they say they found one way out there that's even more habitable than Earth is. And you listen to these guys talk on these podcasts or radio shows, and they'll say, they what they see, the, the way the lost man thinks is that there's life on those planets right now. But there's not life on those planets right now because, remember, God's plan came to a halt because of Adam's sin. So there is nobody on those planets right now. There would have been had Adam not sinned and just kept having children that never died. But see, there's nobody on those planets right now. The, the lost world, they think that there's life out there and they're looking for life. And I heard a guy on this podcast one time, I heard a clip of it, and he's talking about how there's so many planets out there and there's so much life out there that... There's such an infinite amount of planets and the universe is so big that somewhere on some planet that there was two guys on, a, on the same radio podcast wearing the same clothes having the same conversation that him and this other guy were having at that moment. He's saying that there's so many planets that the same exact thing is bound to be happening somewhere on another distant planet. So he's basically saying there's just an infinite amount of planets and an infinite amount of life out there. And you see, he's wrong, but he's right that there's way more planets out there that's going to be populated, but it's just not populated yet. So they're always finding new planets, they say. And most likely the Lord will place two people on a new planet all the time throughout eternity and they will begin to populate the planet that planet just like the pattern with adam and eve and no i don't have verses for that but when you go by the pattern and you look at the bible as a whole that's the way it looks like it's going to be you see what was the first thing he did he took adam and eve put them on earth if they would have continued going on without sinning ate from the ate off the tree of life, lived forever, their kids would have lived forever. Eventually, this planet would have got full. He would have took, some angels would have took them and carried them to a planet, carried two more people to a planet where they would have populated that planet. And it would go on from there. You know, you say, how, how would they get to the other planets? Well, the angels could trans, transport them there, just like they carried Lazarus into Abraham's bosom. And so most likely the Lord will place two people on a new planet and they will begin to populate the planet just like the pattern with Adam and Eve. They most likely will eat from the tree of life on their 33rd birthday if you follow the pattern. You see the pattern? You know, why did, why did the Lord get crucified on his 33rd birthday? Was it for no reason? When he was 33 years old, he got crucified. Was that for no reason or to show a pattern? Most likely, in the eternity, when somebody in their natural body gets to be th around 33 years old, they'll eat off the tree of life, they'll have eternal life, they'll go to another planet to populate it. And they have to, you see, to 
be able to partake of the tree of life, you had to keep the commandments to partake of the tree of life. And so the people that's to partake in this tree of life are not going to be living eternity in their evil state. Remember back there in Genesis 3, he didn't want Adam taken off of that tree of life because he had done sin. And if he took off the tree of life, he would be living eternity in his sinful state. You see, but that's not what it's going to be like. This is going to be perfect, sinless people eating off the tree. And you see, Revelation talks about how there's 12 gates, there's 12 pearls, there's 12 manner of fruits. And they get what Adam and Eve would have gotten had they passed the test and ate from the tree of life. But they're going to get to go in through one of those 12 gates and eat from one of those trees of life that get their life from the pure river of life. So let's just keep looking at what it, what is eternity going to look like? What's it going to be like? We don't know much about it. It's a mystery to us. We just know that it's going to be the, the greatest thing that's ever been. You can think about hell and you think about how bad hell's going to be. Eternity is going to be, for us that are saved, it's going to be as good to us as hell is as bad to lost people. Revelation 21, 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Notice that God gives you a pattern. You can look back at the book of Genesis and it will shed some light on eternity. In Genesis 1, 1, you had in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And now you have a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation 21, 2, And I, John, saw, he saw with his own two eyes. we got a witness here. The Apostle John. He's a trustworthy guy. He's the guy that the, the Lord left in charge with his own mother. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Behold thy mother, behold thy son. He was talking to John. You could trust John. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And the average Christian thinks that when they die, they just... They're just going to be up in the third heaven for all eternity. But that's not true. You're not going to be up in the third heaven playing a harp on a cloud with wings and a halo for all eternity. That's not what it's going to be. In eternity, heaven comes down. The born-again believer from the church age is going to get New Jerusalem. But I don't believe we're going to be limited to that. We're going to have jobs. And Paul shows us that New Jerusalem is the mother of every born-again believer. In Galatians 4.26, he says, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. This, the city, this city descending from the third heaven is called the mother of us all. And this is where those sci-fi movies got the idea for motherships. Even though they didn't know that. The devil knows that. No doubt about it, the devil knew about New Jerusalem. And you, you will still have three groups of people in eternity with, diff, with three different homelands, at least, although they won't be limited to that homeland. It says in 1 Corinthians 10.32, Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. So you got three people groups. Now there will be three people groups in eternity, only... All three people groups in eternity will be righteous, whereas all three people groups are not righteous right now. Right now, the church is righteous. The Jews and Gentiles are, are lost because they're not in Christ. But then in eternity, you still got the three people groups, and all three are righteous. But in eternity, the Jews will get the new earth. The Gentiles will get the new heavens, and the church will get new Jerusalem. But remember the pattern from Genesis. If Adam and Eve never ate off the tree of knowledge of good and evil, then they would have ate from the tree of life and lived forever. Just like he said in Genesis 3.22, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and, look at it, live forever. There would have been so many sinless people who never died that it would have filled the earth and went on out into God's other creation, which is there for a purpose. 
Them, them huge planets ain't there for no reason. Do you think God just made all that stuff in the night sky for you to stare at occasionally? But you see, this is what will happen in eternity with the Gentiles who will populate his kingdom in their natural bodies. They're going to eat off the tree of life. They're going to live forever. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. They're going to go into New Jerusalem, eat from the tree of life. Remember Genesis 1, 28. Remember back there in Genesis where God uh, told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and re replenish the earth before the fall? That was before the fall. He was wanting them to re be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. So there's the pattern. That's what God wants. Sinless beings to grow his kingdom that will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the Gentiles will populate the new heaven. The Jews will populate the new earth, which will go out into other planets as well. And the church's homeland is New Jerusalem. And I believe our job in eternity is going to be a lot more than playing a harp on a cloud. And our glorified bodies will be able to travel faster than the speed of light. We're going to have the mind of Jesus Christ. We'll be able to go around and teach every one of his ways. Say that uh, God wanted two people on another planet to populate it. Okay, we can do that. We'll grab them, take them over there to that new planet. And obviously a lot of this is just speculation, but it's fun to speculate about. In 1 John 3, 2, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're not going to be in our regular bodies no more. Think about it. Say that you're on earth, you want to visit another place. You just think about it. Boom, you're there. You want to go over to this other galaxy over here. You just think about it. Boom, you're there. You just could teleport there faster than the speed of light. It says in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. We're going to know what Jesus Christ knows about the Scripture. We'll be able to teach people throughout eternity about the words of God and about the Lord because you see there's going to be more people being born because you've got people in natural bodies. They're going to need to be taught. These are the ones who will eat off a tree to get eternal life. See, me and you already have eternal life. We're not going to have to eat off the tree of life. We already ate off Jesus Christ on the cross. He was our tree of life. We already have eternal life. Where we're going to have glorified bodies. But there's going to be some people in eternity who will still have flesh and blood bodies. They will eat off the tree of life to get eternal life. Just like Adam and Eve would have done. Do you see the pattern? And I keep saying it over and over again because repetition is key. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to learn that. That which hath been is that which shall be. In Revelation 22, 1 through 2, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees, leaves of the tree, were for the healing of the nations. So there's a requirement for eating off the tree, as I said. Revelation 22, 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. So there would be, there would be no uh, wicked people eating off the tree and living forever. We ain't got to worry about that. And in Revelation 21, 3, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So there will be a tabernacle on earth in eternity for the Jew, but not one in New Jerusalem that city which comes down from God out of heaven. We will be in the very presence of God. The heavenly tabernacle will be with men, and God will be in fellowship with man, just like he was with Adam and Eve. You see the pattern. In Revelation 21, 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. 
neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You see, the difference between this and the millennium? In the millennium, you would still have tears, you'd still have death, you'd still have sorrow, crying, and pain. That goes away. The millennium is the greatest time the world's ever seen. Still not good as eternity. The former things pass away. After the great white throne judgment, you got no more tears, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. Isaiah 65, 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. You're not going to have to remember all the horrible things that happened before. Revelation 21, 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Notice that all things new. Today, man is always trying to come out with something new. They can't even make an original song, an original movie. They don't even have an original thought. When they make a song, they a lot of times sample someone else's song within the song. When they make a new movie, they do remakes, they do sequels. They steal plots from the Bible without even knowing it. They don't have anything new, but the Lord's going to make all things new. You're finally going to get a new house. John 14, 2 through 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. New Jerusalem will most likely contain your new house. It comes down from God out of heaven. New Jerusalem does. Revelation 21, 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Just like Jesus Christ is the water of life given freely. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. And he... And here he is the one who will sustain us throughout eternity. Notice it is given freely, though. God is still a whosoever will God giving out free gifts, just like he does today. Revelation 21, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. If you are a saved believer in the body of Christ, then you have overcome in Christ. The tribulation saints who don't take the mark of the beast are overcomers. The millennial saints who don't side with Satan when he gets out of the bottomless pit are also overcomers. But then you got in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So those are not overcomers. You're going to have some people that don't overcome. There's going to be people that spend eternity in a lake of fire, which is the second death, but you're going to have even more throughout eternity being born. And you know, hell, there, there's a broad way to hell. There's a lot more people in hell right now than there is with the Lord, but eternity is going to keep going. People are going to keep being born to where the Lord's people is going to greatly outnumber those in hell. Remember this. You may have told a lie, but that doesn't mean you're going to the lake of fire. It said, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. But if you're born again, he's not imputing your lies to you. He didn't impute your unrighteousness to you. When he sees you, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. But he's got this in here, Revelation 21, 8, to show you that no evil thing or evil person will be present in the city. Revelation 21, 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. You see, the bride, the Lamb's wife, it, he calls it the Lamb's wife there. They're no longer just engaged. The marriage has taken place at this point. At this point, We've married the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, we're just espoused. Then, we're going to be married. In 2 Corinthians 11, 2, we're an espoused wife. In Revelation 19, 7, we've made ourselves ready. In Revelation 21, 9, we are his wife. The bride is his wife and is likened to a city. 
in Revelation 21, 10, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. The city could come down and land on the earth and touch it, or this city, New Jerusalem, could float around the earth like a satellite. See, I told you, you don't spend, you don't spend eternity in the third heaven. Heaven comes down. Jesus Christ has a bride. His bride is us, and it is a city, New Jerusalem. You see, that doesn't make sense. Okay, Satan has a bride, and it's a city, Mystery Babylon the Great, and he copies the Lord, right? The Lord has a bride, and he has a city, New Jerusalem, and they're both called a bride. Hebrews eleven sixteen. But now that they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. Now Revelation 21, 11 through 12. And having the glory of God and her light was likened to a stone most precious. Even like a jasper stone. Clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high. And had twelve gates. And at the gates twelve angels. And names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. If God is completely done with Israel, then why is he writing the names of the twelve tribes in twelve gates? Why is he using the number twelve so much if he's done with Israel? And notice twelve angels will be at the gates. So angels still have a purpose in eternity. Revelation 21, 13 through 14. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Twelve Jewish apostles. Peter, James, son of Zebedee, John, Andrew, Bartholomew, Simon the Canaanite, Philip, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Labaius Matthias, the twelve apostles of the Lamb. You see, they made a name for themselves during the work of the Lord, just like you can do. You go around spreading the name of the Lord, and He will exalt your name. Revelation twenty one fifteen and 16, And he, he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal no matter where you get your measurements from it's huge most guys that I've read teach that it's 1200 miles wide 1200 miles long 1200 miles high and that covers most of the United States. But no matter where you get your measurements from, it's huge. I read another guy, and he laid it out like this. The city length in furlongs equals 12,000 furlongs. 12,000 furlongs equals 7,920,000 feet. And 7,920,000 feet equals 1,500 miles. City length in miles, 1,500 miles. No matter how you lay it out, it's huge. Going up, it's huge. Going down, it's huge. Going from side to side, it's huge. And some guys have it shaped like a giant cube. Other guys describe it like a, a pyramid standing on top of an upside-down pyramid. But that big. Some guys say, you know, it's touching the earth. Some guys say it's floating around the earth like a satellite and it's you're just speculating at this point we, we don't know it's a it's going to be a surprise revelation 21 17 through 18 and he measured the wall thereof 140 and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel and the building of the wall of it was a jasper and the city was pure gold like on a clear glass you know all the stuff about walking on gold streets turns out to be true you know, the movies like Wizard of Oz where they're walking on a yellow brick road and all the colors and things like that. In the movies, they try to counterfeit the city. 
you can look up where they're trying to build the first smart city right now. That's nothing compared to what New Jerusalem will be like. It says in Revelation 21, 19, And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald. Notice all these precious stones. Remember that the devil had all kinds of precious stones built into him back in his anointed cherub days. And he wants to do everything in his power to make sure you don't go to a city with all those same precious stones that he used to have. Revelation 21, 20 through 22. The fifth, Sardonyx. The sixth, Sardius. The seventh, Chrysolite. The eighth, Beryl. The ninth, a Topaz. The tenth, a Chrysophysis. The eleventh, Adjacent. The twelfth, an Amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. This is New Jerusalem he's describing. And it says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So while there is still uh, one on earth, there's going to be one on earth, there's not going to be one in New Jerusalem. No temple needed in New Jerusalem. And it says in Revelation 21, 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So there will still be a sun and moon, but it won't be needed for light because we will have the light of life, the Lord. Revelation twenty one twenty four. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. You see, the nations of them which are saved. Those are those that came over from the tribulation and the millennium and in natural bodies. Not in glorified bodies, but in natural bodies. You see... The body of Christ, the church, the bride, is the only one promised to have glorified bodies like the Lord has. Now, you're going to have other classes of saints that or will get everlasting bodies because of the tree of life. But we're the only ones promised the glorified bodies like the Lord. The individuals of those, those nations who made it through the great white throne judgment will walk in the light of the city. They will not have glorified bodies, so they will partake of the tree of life along with their offspring and live for eternity and revelation 21 25 and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there you know some people hate bedtime especially your kids they're gonna love this no night there revelation 21 26 and 27 and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they that are written, which are written in the Lamb's book of life. You see, people in the flesh and blood bodies will enter in to partake off the tree of life, which causes you to live forever. Do you ever stop to think about how great this is going to be? You're going to have all these people in perfect fellowship, perfect harmony. No more murder. No more corrupt people running things. No more blood, sweat, and tears. No more death. No more sin. No more fighting the flesh. No more bills. No more worry. Then you get into Revelation 22. And Revelation 22, he says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. So the trees of life get water from the water of life. The water of life proceeds from the throne of God and of the Lamb. He's just giving life to everything. The flesh and blood people will eat off of these trees to get eternal life. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. No more, no more curse, no more thorns and thistles, no more multiplied sorrow. God on the throne and his servants serving him. Revelation 22, 4, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. His name shall be in their foreheads, not the name of the Antichrist, but the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll get to see him face to face. They will be operating by sight. Today, me and you operate by faith. Then you're going to be operating by sight. It's possible that, you know, the tribulation saints, the 144,000, are also inhabiting the city. 
because you can link this here with the name and the foreheads. You can link that with Revelation 14, where it speaks of the 144,000 being sealed in their foreheads. Revelation 22, 5, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. No need for the sun when you have the light of life lighting up everything. But it seems you still have the sun. Because it's a great picture of Jesus Christ and a moon, a picture of the bride. Also, he says in Psalms that the sun and moon are going to be here forever. In Psalm 89, 35 through 37, Once I ha have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. So you see... No need of the sun or moon, but they're still going to be there. Most likely because of what they picture. And it's just going to be greater than you can imagine. It's, it's going to be an endless kingdom. Never stops growing, never stops going. You're going to see the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. People are going to be in perfect harmony perfect fellowship and it's just going to go on throughout eternity this time is greater than the millennium you see the Lord's kingdom doesn't end with the millennium it just keeps going right on throughout eternity you see you had to have the millennium to give man one final choice to choose him or the devil you get into eternity no more worry about the devil no more worry about unclean spirits. No more worry about any type of rebels against the Lord. You're going to have all creation in perfect harmony. Those who chose the devil cast into a lake of fire. The devil in the lake of fire. And there's going to be no more sin. No more sorrow. nor crying. No more pain. But this will be the end for the dispensations next i think we're going to start looking at the seven series for example the seven mysteries the seven judgments the seven resurrections the seven baptisms and things like that